Welcome to basic JavaScript syntax. So I'm going to be uh, showing you a whole bunch of things about how to program in JavaScript over the uh, series of this playlist. And I'll talk a little bit first about my development environment, how I have things set up. So on the right here, I have a program called Brackets. It's a free development environment put together by Adobe. Uh, great for any sort of web development. Over on this side, I've got the Mac OS terminal. Let's see, terminal. And I have Node.js installed, which means if I have a JavaScript file that I've saved, um, let's say this one right here called var1.js. .js is the file extension for all JavaScript files. If I wanted to run that file without the browser, without anything else, Node.js allows me to do that right from the command line. So I can come in here and say node, and then the name of my, far, my uh, file, var1.js, and hit enter. Now, I've got an error in my file. That's what this is telling me. But this is how I'm going to be running all of my JavaScript files, at least for the initial basic JavaScript stuff. So I'm going to clear this out so we don't have to deal with that. Now, coming back over here. One of the core concepts in most programming languages is the concept of a variable. When you're programming, be it for a browser, be it for a desktop application, you're going to be saving values and you want to be able to retrieve those values later on. And the way you can do that is by creating a variable. In JavaScript, the way you do that is with the keyword var. Think of creating a variable as creating an empty box and you can put anything you want into that box. You just create the box, that's what var does, and then you give a label to it so you can refer back to that box later. Let's say name. I'm going to create a box, it's empty, it's going to be have the label name on it, and then if I wanted I can say I'm going to put the number 7, or actually for name, let's do Steve. I wanted to create another one, var ID equals that. Var alive equals true. There we go. There's three JavaScript lines. The first one is creating a variable called name, and I'm putting a string inside of it. Any combination of letters or numbers wrapped inside of quotation marks is called a string. That's its data type. Its data type is string. For this next one, the data type is a number. And for this third one, its data type is a Boolean. So I've created three variables here. One with the label name, one with the label ID, one with the label alive. And then these are the values that I've placed inside of those boxes. run that command again, I'm not getting an error now. Great means I haven't made any mistakes. A few things that I've done here. Whenever you see these double forward slashes, that is a comment. So this is something that I've written to myself, a note that I've left myself, and I want the JavaScript interpreter, the program that runs the JavaScript, I want it to ignore what I've written after that. So these are all comments here. Each one of my lines is ending in a semicolon. That's how I tell the interpreter, that's the end of this line. That's the end of what I'm trying to do right here. Now there's other ways of... There are times when you don't need the semicolon. JavaScript has this automatic semicolon injection that it does when you save and run your file. But to be safe, the best approach is to put the semicolons at the end of every line. Okay, so we've got three variables. Now let's say that I wanted to make them appear on the command line. So how would I do that? Well, there is a an object called console. This has a command called log. This is a method, it's known, with these two parentheses at the end. Whenever you see the two parentheses at the end like this, you know that it's 
a method. It's an action that this thing's going to be taking. And let's see, I wanted to put name inside there. I want, when I run this, I want the value of this variable to be written out here. So let's do this again. I use the uh, up arrow there, by the way, to get the same command to appear again. There it is, Steve. So console.log wrote out the value of what was inside that box. We want to repeat this with ID, and we want to repeat this with alive. Well, alive is a Boolean. That's this true thing here. A Boolean is a true false value. Let's see what we get. There we go. So there's the value of name, the value of ID, and this is the stringified version of the value true. So a Boolean can be either true or false. You notice there's no quotation marks around it. It's just a, a yes or no. If I wanted to change the value of one of my variables, let's say alive, if I set it to false, you notice I've written the exact same thing, except I didn't put var in front of it. So I'm not creating a new variable here. What I'm doing is I am changing the value of what's inside this box. I'm replacing true with the value false. And I can do that with the other ones as well. So I can say id equals 7, name equals John. Save those. Now when I run my JavaScript file, there's the new ones. So up here, I'm declaring the variables. And down here, I'm just overwriting or what's also known as assigning new values. Now, in actuality, this part right here, var name, that is the declaring. This is the assigning. So at this first part, I am declaring and assigning. You can create variables like that and not assign a value to them. If I was to write that one out as well, so this will be our fourth value. So x, y, z. When I run this again, undefined. So we've created the variable x, y, z, but we haven't assigned a value to it. So by default, when we ask JavaScript, hey, that box with the label x, y, z, what's inside of it? It's going to tell us it's undefined. We have not defined a value. We have not assigned a value to it yet. There's nothing inside the box. If we were to take the variable x, y, z, and we're going to assign something to it, I can put in a boolean. I can put a number in. I can put a string in. There's another keyword here that I want to draw your attention to, and that is null. Null means void. It means nothing. We're intentionally saying, OK, I know I haven't given you a value yet, or I know there was a value in there before, but now I want you to empty this box. What the box is going to be holding is nothing. Null is our key word that represents that. So if I run this again, there we go, null. That's the other keyword that we want to look at. So there we go. There's declaring and assigning variables, creating these little boxes. We can put whatever we want in them. We can change what's inside of them. And there's a few keywords here, true, false, undefined, and null. Just keep those in mind for future. And the last thing was console.log. This is a way of writing things out on the command line that we can see.